The world of Naruto is filled with characters that parallel one another in many forms, evoking the themes and ideas that permeate the series. Perhaps there's one duo that in several ways reflects the relationship of the titular Naruto and his arch-rival Sasuke. We're referring, of course, to the taijutsu expert Rock Lee and Neji Hyuga. Rivals in more ways than one, we've only briefly heard mention of the results of battles between the two. But how would things go if we accounted for all the growth that you experienced throughout the series? While we may never truly know for sure, we're here to break it down to the best of our ability. Welcome to the Imagi! In today's video, we're taking a look at who would win in an all-out clash between Rock Lee and Neji. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Imagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. When they're first introduced at the start of the tuning exam, the similarities in their relationship to that of Naruto and Sasuke are undeniable. One is lauded as a genius and a prodigy, naturally talented and with everything to show for it. The other was less gifted, but despite being ridiculed and chastised, he was intensely committed to prove to both himself and those around him that hard work can overcome natural talent. Eventually, the two grew both in skill and bond, becoming good friends and better teammates. To learn more about the lives of Rock Lee and Neji, be sure to check out these videos as soon as you're done with this one. The life of Rock Lee and the life of Neji Hyuga. Now, what we're here to focus on though is who would win in a fight if both of them were at their prime. Lee has admitted before that he constantly loses to Neji, but since that statement, the series has progressed and both have become much more skilled as ninjas. To truly determine who would win if these two titans went toe to toe, we've broken down a few categories for comparison. Please be aware, while we try our best to be as objective as possible and base these analyses on what we've seen from the source material, this is ultimately speculation and is and likely will always be up for debate. Offensive Style First up, we'll be taking a look at each character's offensive style. This is, of course, a large percentage of the basis of any taijutsu, physical strength. And right out of the gate, it's hard to say who has the upper hand. Yes, it would be easy to give this edge to Lee and move on, but we can't discount the fact that Neji was a known prodigy and, before his untimely demise, rest in peace, a veritable master of taijutsu in his own right. These two utilize their physical strength very differently. Lee utilizes his in a very traditional fashion, punches, kicks, and the like for massive external damage. That's a lot of damage! In a style known in the Naruto universe as Goken, or Strong Fist. Described by Might Guy as being focused on beatings, bruises, and broken bones, this external taijutsu style puts overpowering the opponent at the top of the priority list. Neji, on the other hand, specializes in the Hyuga clan's Juken, or Gentle Fist. Literally the exact opposite of Lee's style, this internal taijutsu style has its user putting their physical strength behind much more precise strikes and disrupting the target internally, more specifically, disrupting their chakra in order to incapacitate them. These two different styles are admittedly difficult to compare and calling one stronger than the other would be a challenge either way. But let's try and break it down based on what we know. So these are the advantages for Rock Lee. External damage is great for defeating foes quickly and effectively under most normal circumstances. But here are Lee's disadvantages. Literally anyone worth fighting in the Naruto universe has enhanced physical ability. It's likely very rare that Lee would find himself fighting someone under normal circumstances. When causing physical damage, there's usually a risk of recoil damage that could affect the attacker. Taijutsu requires users to get up close and personal, putting them at equally increased risk when closing the distance. And lastly, this type of damage output is at an extreme disadvantage against Genjutsu and Ninjutsu, especially when they're used at range. But let's also look at the advantages for Neji. In theory, the Hyuga clan's gentle fist requires less physical output and strain to incapacitate the opponent. Pressure point strikes disrupt the opponent's chakra networks, meaning after a thorough barrage of gentle fish strikes, the opponent won't be able to use ninjutsu, genjutsu, or taijutsu. And techniques like the 8 trigrams vacuum palm allow Neji some ability to fight at a distance. But just like Lee, there are disadvantages for Neji. Gentle Fist is not as effective against opponents that are less reliant on chakra and still physically resilient, or opponents that possess an alternate chakra source, like the Jinchuriki. Because it's a taijutsu style, opponents that specialize in ranged attacks stand a better chance of getting the upper hand. So, while neither style is particularly more dominant than the other, at least on paper, Neji's combat style balances its pros and cons much better than Lee's. As a result, we're going to have to give this advantage to Neji. 
Now let's look at defensive ability. When it comes to physical combat, offensive ability isn't everything. Being able to fend off attacks and potentially avoid being hit entirely opens up a whole new dimension of taijutsu worth analyzing. Generally speaking, Rock Lee doesn't have any dedicated defensive techniques, instead relying only on traditional defense methods, using his limbs to block attacks. While certainly pure to the nature of taijutsu, it puts the combatant's physical body at risk of potentially undue damage. I mean, look at uh, Rock Lee versus Gara, but let's, let's disregard that for a second. On the other hand, Neji's 8 trigrams revolving heaven, a secret technique from the Hyuga main family, is a dedicated defensive technique designed to mitigate the blind spot inherent to the Byakugan Kekkei Genkai. It's also a move that Neji makes heavy use of against enemies throughout the series, and it's excellent for both repelling up close and ranged attacks. So, first up, advantages for Rock Lee. We do know that when it comes to traditional defensive taijutsu techniques, Rock Lee is very good at them. And Rock Lee's defense does allow him to stay effectively within combat range. While this doesn't give him time to necessarily reset and recover, it also doesn't afford his opponents the same luxury. But like with advantages, disadvantages come for Lee as well. Rock Lee unfortunately risks his physical body being harmed as a result of his defensive style. And with no real defensive techniques, Rock Lee is more prone to being damaged by weapons, ninjutsu, and other long-range techniques. Now, Neji's advantages. Being a taijutsu expert, Neji has a mastery of traditional defensive taijutsu techniques. And Neji's signature defensive jutsu provides excellent cover from up-close attackers and ranged attacks. But for his disadvantages, the push effect of Neji's revolving heaven does put distance between him and his opponent, but if they're able to recover, Neji would have to get back into close range, which could be difficult depending on who he's fighting. On paper, the versatility of Neji's defense gives him the edge in this category. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to name a decisive winner here simply because defensive ability in the world of Naruto is not exclusively an ability to block attacks. In fact, it largely includes a ninja's ability to not get hit at all. For that though, we'll have to take a look at another category category. Speed. Speed is an attribute that's so integral to combat in Naruto that it makes sense to cover it as an attribute on its own, as it ties to both offense and defense. As talented ninja, both Rock Lee and Neji can both be considered much faster than the average person. But between these two taijutsu experts, which one is faster? It's true that we've seen Neji unleash a flurry of gentle fish strikes time and time again against his adversaries, which is always an impressive display. Furthermore, the revolving heaven jutsu has been mentioned to be capable of reaching speeds up to 12,000 kilometers per hour. And yes, that's incredibly fast. Rock Lee is another story entirely. He's displayed offensive speed that was able to penetrate Gaara's absolute defense as a genin, making him the first person to ever cause Gaara damage. This is no small feat, especially considering their skill level at the time. Bear in mind too that this was a result of relieving himself of a physical inhibitor, his ankle weights. Estimated to have been anywhere between 700 to 1050 pounds per leg, Realizing that Lee was still able to move and fight at an above average speed against other ninjas truly speaks to his capability. <laughs> There's really no sense in breaking down advantages and disadvantages here. Yes, Neji's fast, but Rock Lee, even at base, is faster. Next up, we have combat enhancements. To base the outcome of a fight between these two exclusively on their athleticism would mean completely disregarding the extra abilities that exist in the Naruto world, and that simply wouldn't be fair. Because of the bond shared between these two as rivals, as teammates, and as allies, it would be safe to assume that neither one would hold back and make as much use of their abilities as possible to determine which between them was truly the superior fighter. Ankle weights and things like alcohol aside, Rock Lee's most valuable skill is his ability to open the eight gates, granting him access to absurd physical ability. With each gate, Lee gains a boost to a particular attribute, and it elevates his ability to an entirely new level. What's more, Lee was able to open a number of these gates pre-time skip as a genin. Being able to open even one of these gates is incredibly difficult as noted by Kakashi, so it definitely speaks to Lee's skill as a taijutsu expert. Post-time skip, Lee has learned the ability to open even more gates, only further elevating his ability. On the other hand, Neji is blessed with the analytical abilities of the Hyuga clan's Kekkei Genkai, the Byakugan. 
This dojutsu offers several advantages including a field of view increased to almost a complete 360 degrees as well as a type of x-ray vision, allowing its user to see through obstructions and perhaps most importantly, the internal chakra network of anyone the user chooses to set their sights on. While certainly by no means performance enhancing like Lee's Eight Gates, the Byakugan is something that makes the Hyuga clan's gentle fist martial art so effective. By being able to see chakra points, a gentle fist user will know precisely where to strike an enemy to stop the flow of chakra, strike through enough points, and the effects would keep an enemy from being able to retaliate. So, like always, we'll start with Lee's advantages. The eight gates each skyrocket Lee's physical capabilities, including his strength, speed, and endurance. And his disadvantages? Well, the use of the gates is a double-edged sword, as the user is bound to suffer physical repercussions, anything from fatigue to permanent physical damage, all the way to death. As for Neji's advantages, the Byakugan gives Neji a much fuller viewing field, making him difficult to get the drop on, as well as painting a literal roadmap for him to disrupt any opponent's chakra network with his gentle fist style. As for his disadvantages, there aren't very many other performance enhancements received by the Byakugan. It's great for information, but the information is only as good as what you do with it. On paper, Rock Lee has access to a boon that is both high risk and high reward. Neji, on the other hand, has an ability that he can rely on comfortably and consistently that will keep him aware of his surroundings and able to react accordingly. Because of the stark difference between the benefits of their respective ability enhancements, it's safe to say that Rock Lee gets the advantage here, a buff that'll drastically increase your ability to achieve a decisive win more useful in most cases than X-ray vision, at least in an open combat situation. So, in terms of pure offense and defense, Neji has the advantage. Meanwhile, the categories of speed and enhancement go to Lee. So again, we've got to ask, who would win? The answer is Rock Lee. Let's explain. While there are objective strengths to Neji's offensive and defensive skills, Neji would really only get an edge on Lee if the two were fighting at base. Some might think that Lee's command over the chakra gates is inherently weak to Neji's ability to shut down an opponent's chakra flow, and while that certainly seems like it would be true, there's one detail that it's entirely contingent upon. Neji needs to be able to hit Lee. More specifically, Neji needs to be able to hit Lee enough times at enough chakra points in order to disrupt him. Meanwhile, consider the advantages that Lee has over Neji. Lee is much faster, and after opening his chakra gates, he can achieve awe-inspiring levels of strength. Coupled with his strong fist style, Lee would theoretically only need one well-placed attack in his enhanced state to take Neji down. This would be relatively easy to achieve, and once Lee did get into Neji's striking range, there's really no way that Neji could land 64 strikes before Lee could land one. While it seems in bad taste to give Neji the L after he gave his life in the Great Shinobi War, we're sure he wouldn't take the prospect of losing to Lee as badly as he would have in Part 1. For his commitment to constantly improving, not to mention the fact that he had one of the greatest Taijutsu masters of all time as his mentor, it seems fitting that after a while all that hard work would definitely pay off. Hats off to you, Rock Lee. You won this competition. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.